Good day everyone. My name is Mr. Chisum. So today we'll be looking at the development of the pancreas. We'll be looking at the development of the pancreas. So remember I told us in our last video about the four gods, mid god and hind god. So the pancreas develops from the four gods. The pancreas develop on both sides of the four gut. So this is it now. This is the four gut. And this is the already developing hepatic board eh, that is moving towards the uh, septum transversum that gave rise to the liver. You get so it is developing on its own. Now, towards the fifth week of the fepa life or towards the fifth week of the intrauterine life some endodermal cells begin to thicken on the four gods and this endodermal thickening appear on both the ventral part of the four gods and also the dosal part of the four gods so you can see the endodermal thickening on the ventral part of the four gods and you can see the endodermal thickening on the dosal part of the four gods here so the endodermal thickening on the ventral part of the four gut, you can see it is growing just around the inferior aspect of the hepatic board, the angle between the hepatic board and the four gut. You can see it growing here. So this endodermal thickening, both on the ventral part of the four gut and the dosal part of the four gut, are known as the ventral and the dosal pancreatic board so this is known as the pancreatic board the ventral pancreatic board and this is known as the dosal pancreatic board it is from this pancreatic board that the pancreas develop so let's proceed so coming over here now the pancreatic board begins to elongate so you can see the pancreatic board due to proliferation of cells the pancreatic board begins to elongate and you can see the dosal pancreatic board elongating the ventral pancreatic board elongating and they are growing passing through the the mesogastrium the ventral pancreatic board is passing through the ventral mesogastrium while the dosal pancreatic board is passing through the dosal mesogastrium what happened here in this diagram here is that you know that this part of the Four gut gave rise to the duodenum, the second part of the duodenum. So this part of the four gut gave rise to the duodenum. So the duodenum, because of the looping of the duodenum, or because of the, you know that the duodenum, it, when it develops, it doesn't develop as a C-shaped uh, structure. But when it develops, because the development of the duodenum is also happening here. At the same time, the duodenum group or curve to the right, when this happens, both the hepatic board here and the ventral board come to lie around the dosal board. So I'll explain this here now. This is the transverse section of the pancreatic board, both the dosa and the ventral one. So initially, this is the ventral pancreatic board and this is the dosal pancreatic board so because of the looping of the duodenum the ventral pancreatic board come to move to the right it come to move to the right why the dosal pancreatic board come to move to the left so this is it now the ventral move to the right and the dosal move to the left and when this happened, it remained like this. But because of some differential growth in the duodenum, the ventral pancreatic board now come to join the dosa pancreatic board in the left, in the left. So you can see it now. Because of some differential growth in the duodenum, the ventral now leaves here to join the dosa in the left. Initially, because of the looping of the duodenum, the ventral move to the right, the dosa move to the left. Because of further development in the duodenum or differential growth, 
the vent will now come to join the dozer in the left and this is it and finally this and finally this so while this is happening the duct system is also forming eh? so you can see the pancreatic duct of the dosal board and you can see the pancreatic duct from the ventral pancreatic board so the development of the duct system or the duct of the pancreas is also happening at the same time you get so that is it so at the end now the dosal pancreatic board and the ventral pancreatic board come to lie together so the dosal pancreatic board eventually gives rise to the superior part of the head of the pancreas the neck of the pancreas the body of the pancreas and the tail of the pancreas you can see it here the superior part of the head the neck the body and the tail that is what the dosal pancreatic board gave rise to why the ventral pancreatic board only gave rise to the uncinate process of the pancreas and also the inferior aspect of the head of the pancreas as you can see here why this is the duodenum because they open into the duodenum so they open into the second part of the duodenum so having seen this let's go over to what happened eh? you know the duct is developing here but what never happened to the duct so let's look at what happened to this duct so this is the hepatic or bile duct so this is the bile duct here this is the duct of the dosal board as you can see here and this is the duct of the ventral board as you can see here now the hepatic or the bile duct open into the duct of the ventral board when the uh, bile duct open into the duct of the ventral board when this happen now the duct of the ventral board moves slightly up to open into the duct of the dosal board so the two ducts anastomose together or the two ducts anastomose they they join together so you can see the two ducts joining together here and when they join together eh, now the proximal part of the duct of the dosal board begin to obliterate eh? the proximal part here of the duct of the dosal board begin to obliterate and sometimes it becomes narrow it becomes very narrow so you can see what we have here it becomes very narrow to form the accessory pancreatic duct now the remaining becomes the main pancreatic duct and the main pancreatic duct is formed from the distal part of the dosal duct and the whole of the ventral duct so you can see this is the main pancreatic duct the distal part of the dosal duct and the whole of the ventral duct forms the main pancreatic duct why the proximal part of the dosal duct becomes the accessory pancreatic duct now the accessory pancreatic duct opens into the second part of the duodenum eh, in a place or an area known as the minor duodenal papilla why the main pancreatic duct join with the bile duct to form the hepatopancreatic duct and together they open into the major duodenal papilla so this is what happened in the formation of the duct so coming to the islet of Langerhan, the islet of Langerhan, which is majorly found at the tail of the pancreas, eh, develops from the parenchyma of the pancreatic tissue around the third month. Eh? It develops around the third month, and by the fifth month, insulin secretion must have started. Also, glucagon, glucagon secreting cells and somatostatin secreting cells also develops from the parenchyma of the pancreatic tissue so coming to the molecular level eh, you know that all these developments 
wouldn't have been possible if nothing is happening at the molecular level. There are factors that are responsible for this development. Factors that are responsible for this development is the fibroblast growth factor and also activin. It is these two factors that activate the duodenal and pancreatic homoebulous gene to begin this development. So that is it. So coming to the clinical correlates, we have the annular pancreas. We have the annular pancreas. The annular pancreas simply means that the pancreatic tissue surrounds the duodenum. The pancreas lie it surrounds it lies in the C shape of the duodenum, but in this case it surrounds the whole of the duodenal tissue or the duodenum. It surrounds the whole of the duodenum. It may obstruct the duodenum. So that is what annular pancreas means. Then we have the second one, which is known as the, the accessory pancreas. The accessory pancreas means that maybe a small fragment of the pancreas or a similar pancreas that may not be functional may also develop why the main pancreas is developing and this pancreas can be found maybe in the stomach maybe in the gallbladder maybe in the spleen maybe in the in the duodenum or even anywhere so that is it then we have the third one which is known as divided pancreas divided pancreas simply means that you see that the dosal look at it the dosal board pancreatic board and the ventral pancreatic board joined together here eh? you can see they join together here so in the case of divided pancreas they fail to join you see so they fail to join and they open differently the ducts open differently eh? that is the the dosal pancreatic ducts open differently and the ventral pancreatic duct open differently so that is what we have for the clinicals. So we've come to the end of this teaching. I'll encourage us to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Learn with Chisum Great. Like this video, share this video to your friends, and comment on this video. Thank you very much.